Hey, how's it going? My name is Michael. I'm from California. And I wanted to give you an introduction about AI. Um, have you ever wondered what's behind Amazon Alexa, for example? Or, you know, behind the Google subtitle auto generation? I think AI right now is really um, coming into our lives in all different angles. If you're curious about learning AI, um, come and learn with me. So this is basically a series of lectures um, to introduce people the general ideas behind AI. And this is um, me taking a picture with a, a whole bunch of my students in Aragon High School. And we have been iterating this content for about three different versions at a dozen high schools around the Bay Area. And it's a reader lecture um, catered towards to high schoolers. Uh, but it's really for anybody who wanted to learn any ideas behind the AI. We do not need any coding experience to start with this. We're going to introduce you the big ideas and not hardcore coding. Um, and just a little bit introduction and also, I guess, um, um, a shameless uh, plug for our um, camp. Uh, We're from AI camp. Uh, if you go to ai-camp.org, you can take a look of our website and take a look of our content and what we do there. But what we are doing is essentially we provide a summer and online camp for high school students. Uh, and what we are focusing on is to um, build a really impressive AI product. So instead of, for example, like give you a bunch of lectures about AI and finally you're going to make a presentation about, oh yeah, AI can do this and good can do that. We basically are going to essentially create a AI product, a very impressive AI product with you uh, in three weeks of time. A lot of our students started with no coding experience. By the end of it, uh, they're very versatile in terms of uh, programming as well as using a command line and they know the concepts in deep learning, for example. Uh, in addition to making um, AI products, we also tour different companies. For example, this photo here, we wanted to Lyft and we talk to people in Lyft and we, and we try to learn uh, the environment, the jobs, the, the path, the career path um, people in Lyft, they, they take. Uh, again, low, no coding experience required. And you can apply today at ai-camp.org. So the motivation for us to create this lecture series uh, is really for us to inspire you to build something in AI and to make AI learning less intimidating. When you think about, for example, you know, the intelligence behind Amazon Alexa or, you know, as I said, the Google subtitle auto generation, when you look at it, it might be pretty intimidating, right? And yes, you know, in order for you to create these products and to do it well in a very competitive landscape, yes, you have to learn all the major pillars in machine learning, in data science, and in programming. Um, but that doesn't, that should not stop you from starting something and build something that's really, really fun. Um, so I'm listing here, yes, there are, you know, for example, to understand the uh, basics in data science and in deep learning, you have to understand algebra, linear algebra, probability statistics, calculus, because many of these important concepts in deep learning, they're associated with these math concepts. For example, Right. How do we optimize the deep learning network has to do with the back, uh, the chain rule, right? Um, there's an algorithm called the back propagation. We'll go more into it. Uh, and also when you look at, for example, how we collect data, label data, deploy the model, everything has to do with basic programming and understanding of computer systems and data infrastructure. And further on, if you wanted to innovate and build models, you have to understand the basics in terms of data exploration, machine learning, and deep learning. Uh, but again, these are the things where we hope that you, know, you as a high school student or who are, you know, wanted to start and jump in to learn about AI, um, you don't have to have all the fundamentals, but you can already start doing something and you can use your interest to essentially drive uh, more to learn. So we're gonna to touch upon this a little bit more you know, later in the lecture. Uh, just to showcase that um, you as a high school student, you can even build an impressive AI product. I wanted to demo this AI product 
that's made by five students from our camp. So the URL is emotion.ai-camp.org. Um, so everything you see here is pretty much made by a high school student, made by a group of high school students in three weeks. And a lot of us like started without any coding background. Right? So as I said, everything here, so this is, this is basically a motion detector. You upload a photo right, right here. We can try that a little bit later on. And this algorithm will basically detect if there is any human face here, and if there is, what kind of emotion uh, the face is illustrating, right? They can detect five basic emotions, including happy, neutral, sometimes we call them poker, poker face, sad or surprised and angry. You can see our demo here. Um, so here are the students who made this product. Uh, we have Beatrice from Los Gatos High School, Ari from American High, Thomas from Irvington High, uh, Clement from Gang High and Muti from Judy Perry or Sarah High. A lot of them they are um, senior and junior or sometimes like freshmen in high school and they are going to top universities like Carnegie Mellon and MIT. So my name is Michael, Michael Zhang. So uh, I'm one instructor together with, with Ying. We both have a PhD in, uh, Stan at Stanford. Um, students wrote about their experiences. You can go ahead and, and take a look. You can also see our entire code here. Okay, so let's let's give this product a try, shall we? So we just click this. By the way, you can actually go to this URL and you can um, try this uh, on your um, you can try this on your phone. So I have my favorite actor here. You can just click his this photo and I want to upload it. Okay, we just want to give this a second. Oh look, right. So we already detected um, happy in this photo, right? And there is also this confusion matrix, which we'll touch upon what this means later to see uh, whether the model worked or not. Okay. Um, however, I want to point out, despite the fact that there is so much advancement in creating AI, we're still really, really early, right? We're not there yet. We're, we're so behind. We're so far away from creating the general AI. And I found this sentence here. I've got actually who said it, but it's it really illustrate uh, the current limitation for AI pretty well. So the biggest limitation for AI right now is that it's only as smart as the data it serves. What this means is that the AI that we currently created are quite task specific. Right, it has a limited scope. So for example, when you look at the emotion detector, um, I think for anyone who is first looking at, for his first looking at it, it, it must be, wow, you know, this is pretty crazy, right? Like the machine can tell the emotion inside a picture. Uh, but guess what? Uh, the emotion detector can only detect human emotion, right? And it can only uh, do so well based on the data. Uh, at the same time, we look at how data intensive that is. We provided about uh, 7,500 images to train this AI, right? And it also has a fixed architecture. It's never going to change, right? And when we look at how we develop in these AI products, in my personal opinion, I think the data tools are not there as well. Um, so uh, I, I think right now, a lot of folks are trying to, uh, for example, discuss about the ethics of AI. But to me, I think we're a little bit far, you know, from really generalize uh, what we learned so far and create strong AI. Okay. Um, now I wanted to um, talk a little bit about machine learning and why machine learning sort of like took off uh, in very recent years. So the first thing to illustrate is the fact that right now we have very strong computational power in our hands. Um, for anyone um, who you know, is in semiconductor industry, they would know this law called Moore's Law. So Moore's, Gordon Moore is uh, a co-founder of Intel, and uh, years ago he proposed this Moore's Law, which states the fact that the number of transistors on integrated circuit chips would double every two years. And this law has been essentially effective or you know, valid for the past 40 to 50 years. 
So this much of growth combined with such a long time horizon, you can see how much computational horsepower has been essentially um, improved and generated and has been essentially put in our hands. So um, together, we also have software innovations such as Hadoop and Spark, which can essentially uh, group a team of these chips together and do computational works together. Right? So these machine learning benefits so much from um, the fact that we have so much computation. As we have more and more powerful devices put in our hands, together with the innovation of internet as well as social network, uh, we are essentially generating a lot of data uh, online. So here I'm plotting uh, the size of Wikipedia articles over time, and you can see here uh, we just have more and more data. And with this more data, as I mentioned, machine learning is really about data plus computation. Uh, you can see why machine learning is uh, gaining more and more popularity. Okay, so machine learning is really data plus computation. Now there are uh, several categories of machine learning, but here I'm listing the major three categories of machine learning, and it's worthwhile to understand the inside of the, you know, the details of it a little bit. So we have supervised machine learning. So that is, if we give a few examples, Right? Can you predict the outcome? So this is essentially when you think about the emotion det detector. It's a supervised machine learning model. Right? That is, we are giving this machine many, many of these photos of different emotions and tell them, hey, look, this is happy, this is sad, this is angry, this is neutral. And then the machine, upon adjusting its internal workings, can then predict upon seeing a new photo what kind of emotions there is. And then we have this unsupervised machine learning, right? sort of like, okay, now we don't give the machine any details. We don't give the machine any you know, quote-unquote labels. But then can the machine find any interesting stuff inside the data set itself? Right? And finally, in the recent number of years, you know, probably in the, in the past maybe five years or so, we also have seen this um, new category which is called reinforcement learning uh, taking off and it's really really exciting to see uh, the reinforcement learning stuff because it really mimics like how we human kind of behave in the environment um, so this is essentially uh, a new formulation where it has an agent sort of like taking um, output you know or observation from the environment and can exert actions into the environment and then at the same time gain some reward. And the job for the reinforcement learning algorithm or training is essentially how do you train this intelligent agent, how do you structure this intelligent agent so that we can accumulate as much reward as possible. You can see this new kind of formulation is really, really interesting. And it can sort of like, you know, having um, tremendous amount of applications, whether in gaming or stock trading. And we'll talk um, more about it later. So as I mentioned, you know, this is the first lecture of a lecture series, and we will actually explain the details uh, behind these three major uh, categories of machine learning in uh, later videos. So now I wanted to touch upon a little bit about deep learning. As I mentioned, deep learning is really mimicking what's going on inside our brains. So when you look into our brains, you will discover uh, there are these cells called neurons, and they are essentially one computational unit inside our brain. A neuron is essentially, um, basically it has inputs, and these inputs are called dendrites, and based on the inputs, the neuron will change the, um, the potential difference across its membrane. And when that difference uh, exceeds a certain level, the neuron essentially will trigger um, there is the, a propagation of a signal, which is uh, we, we're going to call an action potential. An action potential is nothing but a, a propagation of different ions going across the cell membrane. Okay, and once that action potential travel all the way right to the axon terminal, what happens is this neuron will release some chemical signal. And these chemical signals are called neurotransmitters. 
and these neurotransmitters right will uh, go into the receptors of the new inputs for the next neuron. So a neuron is never really standing uh, alone, but it's working in a network. So when you look at, for example, the human brain, and when you look at where we're processing that visual information, it's really in the back of our brain, uh, in this cortex called the visual cortex. And when you look at into this visual cortex, what happens is that um, you will see essentially layers of layers of layers of neurons that are interconnected, right? So our visual cortex is organized uh, in a group or network. And when you look into these cells in the network, and when you look at, oh, you know, what would this cell um, do uh, when you see certain images? Um, so people have done, scientists have done some experiments using cats where they discovered that um, when you go deeper and deeper into the network, each cell, they would be uh, become more and more specialized. So for example, when you look at, um, you know, for example, I, I don't know the details, but I do know that, I, I forgot what, what layer it was, but when they look at, for example, layer 4 neuron and they put an electrode there, they discovered that this neuron would only fire action potential if, for example, you move a light bar in only in certain direction across a certain region in the in the screen, and it won't it, it will not fire uh, if if you have any other pattern or at any other region um, uh, in the screen. So this tells us, you know, for example, that neuron is only going to fire when you're going to see. For example, a horizontal bar moving left or right at the center of the screen. And when we think about all these neurons that are doing the same thing, then you discover, oh wow, maybe the, this, this whole layer of neuron is only here to detect outlines of images. Right? And when you think about, you know, for example, what's going on inside our brain, that inspired us to create these deep um, neural networks uh, to mimic what's happening in the brain. So what's um, Drawn on the right hand side here is we're showing you a deep neural network with two hidden layers. So the input layer, you know, you can imagine these are essentially the, the axon fibers, you know, coming from your retina, right? And the output could be, for example, oh, do I see danger or do I not see the danger, right? And every circle here, that's just a basic little neuron. And they were doing exactly what the neuron would do. They were summoning, the, the summing all the input from the previous neuron. And then once it exceeds a certain level, it will basically fire a signal to another 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 um, layer of network. However, keep in mind here, the biological neural network is way and way more complex than um, the best artificial neural network that we have right now. Um, inside our human brain, we have about 86 billion neurons, and each neuron they are connected up to 10,000 different neurons. And then in each of these connections, they are around, uh, inside our brain, I think there are close to 40 neurotransmitters inside our brains. And we will multiply these numbers together, right? They are huge. And our best neural network probably have less than 100 layers, right? And the number of parameters, probably just several billion. That's about it. So we are far from, you know, achieving what nature can achieve right now. Okay, so... Congratulations, you have just finished the first part of learning AI with AI Camp. You have learned uh, what AI is, what a machine learning is, what deep learning is, and why, for example, right now we have a really uplift in machine learning. And you also learned deep learning is really mimicking what's going on inside our brains. And hopefully after seeing how a group of high school students can produce something that's very impressive, like the emotion detector that could also inspire you to learn it with us. Just follow me through and we should be able to learn um, a good amount of AI together. Now in the second part, uh, we're gonna talk about essentially how AI products are, are made. So for example, the emotion detector, the kind of steps we went through to make it. We're also gonna point out a few resources for you to learn about AI. So come on to our second part and learn together with us.